Okay, so for the last little while, I have been um, growing worms and worm castings in my basement. Um, this worm, these couple worm bins that I've been growing are roughly about eight months old now. Um, yeah, I started them in the summer, so about eight months, I'd say. And uh, the way that I have them set up is probably not conventional, uh, but I find it the most simple and the most effective for me anyways. So all that I have is basically I've got a Rubbermaid tub, okay, and it's got uh, holes drilled all over the sides of it, okay, and in the bottom as well. And that's just sitting on the lid so that if I ever put too much water in it, uh, the excess water drains, uh, but doesn't get on the floor, right? Now, that's very rare. I don't have to add more, much water to these. Um, it's very, very seldom that I have to add water. Um, once you get the right moisture capacity in them, you don't really have to mess with it very often. It's only when you add a bunch of dry material, you might want to add in some extra uh, liquid. Uh, so, on top of, um, now that this bin was f filled up with uh, worm castings, uh, finished worm castings and uh, material, um, I added these buckets on top. These buckets have holes drilled in the bottom, um, like uh, half inch holes in the bottom, lots of them, all in the bottom of them. And then these, uh, like, uh, whatever that is, quarter inch, or no, that's like an eighth inch hole there. Um, all over the sides of these, um, and on this one as well. Um, doesn't look like there's as many on the sides of this one, but um, the bottom is completely penetrated with holes on this one. So worms can crawl from this bin up into this, okay? And then these are just uh, empty bins on top to act as lids, okay? I just use them as garbage pails for now, and I put my tools in there. So, and then um, when I have fresh material, like uh, paper, sh shredded paper or banana peels or whatever, I add that to the top and uh, kind of mix them up. Um, I add uh, shredded wood in there. I'll put a bunch of uh, little pieces of wood um, into a blender with some fruit and, uh, and water and blend it up. I've got a really powerful blender that can pulverize wood really nicely. And so I get like a sludge and just pour it in there. That gives me the, um, liquid content I need, um, like the moisture content I need and, uh, the nutrition I need for, for my worms. Um, I've got some calcium in here as well, uh, that I, uh, used a uh, lime, uh, dolomitic lime, uh, powdered dolomitic limestone, um, for the lime. So this is, uh, plenty of lime in there. I added a bunch of, uh, kelp meal in here as well, and, uh, alfalfa meal, and a couple other goodies in there as well. And some charcoal, um, biochar, I guess is what you'd call it at this point. Um, as you can see, I've got worms crawling on me. Yep, good guys. Okay, get off me. All right. So, as you can see, they're doing quite well. And uh, I got another bin over here. This guy's pretty much finished, so um, it's all the way full. I can add some buckets to the top of that, too, if I want to. But for now, I'm just letting uh, this one finish up. I just added some paper to the top just to really top it up and uh this has some wood in there that's going to take at least a couple months a few months to break down um so i'm just letting this one go until it's uh finished and uh you know once all everything's uh consumed in there um it's something like five to ten times that the worms can re-ingest their own castings over and over again to um really just really make it the best castings that it can be just really make it so that everything in there is completely refined to the best stuff that uh, that you can have you know so 
the longer that you like if you get it to this stage looking like this and you just um use it at that point it's going to be great okay don't get me wrong however if you let it sit there and mature and let the worms mull it over for an extra month or two after after it looks like it's finished um it's going to be amazing okay so um I went ahead before I started recording this and I went and I looked through this and I found um, uh, a, a half dozen or so worm eggs because I just wanted to show you guys what that looks like. Um, so I'll show you over here. Now you don't find these all clumped up together like this in the worm casting bin. You'll find them spaced out. So. Uh, you just kind of have to hunt them down. They look like miniature little um, grapes, don't they? <laughs> yeah, to me, they look like little grapes. Uh, these are about a millimeter across. Okay. Yeah, just about a perfect millimeter. And when they're um, ready to um, burst, like when they're... When they're finished and they're ready to have the worms come out of there, um, they'll go dark in color, um, a little bit darker than this, I believe. I don't think these any of these are quite ready to go. They might, a couple of these might be. I'm not gonna test them out. But when they're ready to go, you can actually just ever so gently take them between your thumb and forefinger like this, and just kind of roll it back and forth and give it a gentle squeeze like that. And uh, out through that tip there, you see that little tip there? See that tip? You'll get uh, wor little tiny little worms start to squiggle out of it. It's really crazy. Actually, I'll give this one a try. See if I can get it on camera. Since I got this one lined up. I might just get a bunch of liquid come out of this. Oh, yeah, that just exploded. <laughs> so I think I just toasted whatever worms were alive and growing in there. But uh, yeah, you can have anywhere from um, one one worm per egg to um, I think like ten or fifteen or something like that. But Maybe not that many. I don't know. I've never really checked, but... Well, I've checked a couple of them. Um, I've checked a handful, like a dozen of them or so. Just because I was curious. When I first started doing this, I wasn't even sure if these were... Uh, something from... Like a seed from fruit that I put in there. Or if these were the actual eggs. So I'll add these back in. So... Um, yeah, I took one and I did that. And it was ready to go because... I had like four or five tiny, the tiniest little worms squiggle out of there one by one. And they were alive. They were ready to go. And uh, it was the most amazing thing. I was giving birth to my first new little baby worms. And I put them in the soil and they squiggled down. And uh, it was great, you know. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, you're best off not to try to hatch them yourself. Just let them go. And uh, so, yeah, I just have these at room temperature down here. Um, a little bit warmer than room temperature is going to give you more faster uh, decomposition and, uh, and growth. Now, I just want to mention, you're not feeding the worms the food. What's happening is the food is going to uh, decompose slightly and uh, it's going to grow um, mold and fungi and bacteria on it. And the... Uh, the worms actually consume the bacteria and fungi. And, uh, yeah, that's what they're actually consuming. Um, so, yeah, they don't have any teeth. Uh, they've got, I think it's a gullet or a gizzard or something like that. And um, it's, uh, it's basically, I think it's similar to what a bird has or something like that. But anyways... Uh, they they get they have to have grit in here as well. So you want that's what I've got the lime in here for. Um, I've got some terracotta pot that I 
terracotta pots that I ground up in here just to add some some mineral um, diversity in here for one and uh, I've also got some really fine just uh, just like gravel just ground up super fine I ground it up in my blender as well and that's just mixed in here just some stone you know just some regular stones um, because what the worms will do from what I, my understanding is they'll get a little bit of that grit um, ingested and it'll um, collect in their gizzard and basically that acts as a grinder type thing to kind of as they're um, ingesting like the the uh, material um, so they'll they'll actually swallow like this soil material right um, they'll ingest that if I grab a worm here you can actually see through their bodies and you can see um, the material inside them and uh, so as that material is passing through them um, as it goes through the gizzard part um, it uh, gets ground up so you can see the darker spots inside of its inside of its body there um, let's get this to focus here yeah you can see the darker spots on its body and the darker spots on its body are the spots where um the the dirt is being inject has been ingested and is passing through it and is being um uh, the bacteria and stuff is being uh ingested and used as energy in the in the worm and uh, it's passing out through its back end more refined and it's um being uh um is being inoculated further inoculated with beneficial microbial material um i don't know the 100 percent the scientific details of what the bacteria and fungi that it's that it inoculates um the the soil with coming out the back end what i do know though is that uh, if there's any bad bacteria or fungi um going into this thing um it will destroy that stuff and what comes out the back side of this is just the beneficial bacteria from my understanding um and if i'm correct uh that would mean that if it ingests anaerobic uh bacteria or fungi which is um fungi that uh thrives in fungi or bacteria that thrives in uh, conditions where there's a lack of oxygen then um that's like the bad bacteria and fungi you don't want that if you're growing plants uh, what you want is the aerobic bacteria the type of um aerobic fungi and aerobic bacteria aerobic microbial materials um, because those are bacteria and fungi that grow in oxygen oxygenated um substrates and uh those are what uh, are going to be beneficial for your plants so um yeah you can see the dark spots inside this uh this little guy and uh one another thing to mention while i got you watching this is um they've got uh once they're sexually mature um they ha they get this band around them. You've probably noticed this on worms. About a, a quarter up on their body, you'll notice they've got this uh, this band. Um, and what that is is uh, that's where the sexual reproductive organs are um, housed, I believe. Anyway could be wrong you know i'm no i didn't really uh do my research 100 i didn't look up my my research material before i started filming this so this is all just off the top of my head but uh i believe that's where the sexual organs are um anyways if it does get impregnated and is going to produce an egg um the egg gets um developed inside that band area that's like a a womb i suppose and then um and then it gets pushed out the back side i believe i don't think it barfs it up i'm pretty sure it gets pushed out the back side once the thing's mature 
And, uh, yeah, I, oh, there's an egg right there. Um, do you see it? Let's see if you can, it's right in the middle of the screen. Yeah, that's an egg right there. It looks like a pretty dark one, too. What do you say? Should we give it a squeeze? Should we give it a squeeze? What do you say? Yeah, let's give it a squeeze. Why not? For the sake of video. <laughs> All right, guys. Here we go. It's going to be hard to do this and get it focusing. Focus, you dang dang. Focus, dang dang. All right, screw the focus. If you don't get this focused, when you, I'm going to show you after. Actually, no. Let's go over to the table. I'm going to pause this. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> okay, so she's not spewing out babies. Oh, there's one. There's a baby. There's a baby. Do you guys see that? Do you guys see that? There's a baby coming out. There's a baby, yay! Now, I don't feel comfortable doing this on the camera without killing this guy, so we're gonna stop right there, and do you see it moving? It's moving, it's alive. I didn't kill it, I didn't squish it, but it is ever so delicate, okay? Do you see it moving? It is moving. It's alive. It's alive. Okay, so I'm going to, before I do any damage to this little tiny organism, I'm going to take it back over to the bin, and I'm going to just drop it in there and let it go back to its natural cycle. Okay. All right. Yeah. I got one on film. That's cool. All right. So, at that, I think I'm going to conclude this video. All right. Like and subscri subscribe, please. You know, um, I do a bunch of random videos. So, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so because I'm struggling here.